Shabbat Shalom and welcome to Olive Tree Community Spokane. The following recording is from this week's teaching on the Parsha or portion from the Torah. You can find more details on this Parsha and the scripture being referred to in the pull down menu below. Now let's join our teacher as he shares his insights from the scriptures. All right. Well, first let me pray. Father, in Yeshua's name, I just ask that the words that I speak will be your words and that as they are spoken, they'll be heard and they'll sink deep into the hearts and souls as your word is intended to do in Yeshua's name. Amen. Uh, I would like to read a psalm first. Uh, that's a little tradition I started in another congregation that I was attending at one time. And it's the psalm, uh, it's a psalm of David, Psalm 15. And it goes, Adonai, who can rest in your tent, who can live on your holy mountain? Those who live a blameless life, who behave uprightly, who speak truth from their hearts and keep their tongues from slander, who never do harm to others or seek to discredit neighbors, who look with scorn on the vile, but honor those who fear Adonai who hold to an oath no matter what the cost, who refuse usury when they lend money, and refuse a bribe to damage the innocent. Those who do these things never will be moved. Amen. Well, this Parsha uh, will further develop the ten words that were stated in a previous Parsha, um, which was in Exodus 20, 1 through 17. The difference is, is that there didn't follow a list of consequences for breaking these. Uh, this particular parsha will uh, reveal some of the consequences if we don't follow his commands. And there's a reason why God intends us to follow his commands. It's basically because he wants relationship with us. And this relationship is something that we should desire. And it should also be one that we desire to have with other people, not just God alone, but we should desire to have this with our spiritual family in Yeshua. Sadly, so many things prevent this from happening. In both cases, our relationship with one another and with God as well. So the covenant at Mount Sinai. This is his plan of redemption that is reaching its goal, which is his plan. He has redeemed his firstborn, but in a larger sense, he's restoring or has restored the fellowship with his creation. The covenant is now the marriage agreement. You may have heard that before, that that's what was going on at the mountain. It wasn't just the roaring and everything, but it was, he brought his people out of Egypt, his firstborn, so that he could have a marriage covenant with them. So he brought his bride unto himself. Israel, and now all who have joined themselves to Israel, which is everybody in this room, I pray, are to be progressively living out his plan to become holy and set apart, so sanctified. And we see this desired result in Deuteronomy chapter 4, 5 through 6, where it says, Look, I have taught you laws and rulings, just as Adonai, my God, ordered me. This is Moshe, Moses talking, so that you can behave accordingly in the land where you are going in order to take possession of it. Therefore, observe them and follow them, for then all peoples will see you as having wisdom and understanding. When they hear of these laws, they will say, this great nation is surely a wise and understanding people. So, not that I'm going to get into a long list, but there are a few consequences that are mentioned in this Parsha if we don't obey. 
Okay, in Exodus 22, 20, anyone who sacrifices to any god other than Adonai alone is to be completely destroyed. Completely destroyed. We read that today and we go, nobody's getting completely destroyed, right? Well, that was the second command. You are to have no other gods before me. So he's making it clear what he means by that. And so anyone, any God, sacrifices, completely destroyed? Well, I think about all the past kings of Israel and all the past kings of Judah, you know, those ones who did the stupid things like letting their children be offered to a false god, that was a sacrifice. I don't think they killed many of them, but you know what God did? God took them out. <laughs> he made sure that they didn't let last very long and that a lot of bad things happened because of their choice to sacrifice to false gods. So, but what could that look like today? You know, in this 2024, what does it look like when we make those kind of decisions Uh we should be asking ourselves that. But really what we should be doing is asking Yeshua, can you reveal to me where I'm making sacrifices to other gods and not you? Because we really want to live lives that are wholly committed to him and him alone. So we should consider that. Well, in Exodus 23, verse 10, as we heard briefly before, for six years you are to sow your land with seed and gather its harvest, but the seventh year let it lie fallow, so that the poor among you can eat, and what they leave, uh, wild animals can eat also. And do the same with your vineyard and your olive grove. Well, should this be telling us anything? The poor are among us. So why shouldn't we, or why not, be concerned all the time? Uh, Yeshua reminds us that we should be doing that. He says that the poor will always uh, have you, you'll be with, they'll be with you, and you could do good things for them. There's actually three references, either in, in Matthew 26, 11, or in John 12, 8, but I want to read Mark 14, 7. It says, for you will always have the poor with you, and whenever you want to, you can help them. So whenever you want to. Um, so previously we read about the ground laying fallow and the ore can come and partake of that. Well, <clears throat> there's also another verse or two. It talks about not gleaning to the corners so that the poor would have, you know, continuous opportunities. So it wasn't just that Shemitah or the seventh year that they came and uh, we also know Ruth, right? She was gleaning in Boaz's field. So we know that that was a good thing to do. And that was the way certain people were able to provide for the poor or those who didn't have enough. So examples for us, you know, how could we look at that today? You know, sometimes we consider that like feeding the hungry who are out there. Uh, they, are, they are out there. <laughs> God always says the poor is going to be with you. So... So here's one, uh, part of our Parsha again, that I think I'm going to say almost all of us are guilty of. I think I may have included myself in that as well, that Exodus 23, 13, and it starts off by saying, pay attention to everything I have said to you. Okay, so everything. And this is Mo Moses. He wrote the book and then he, he read it to them. Do not invoke the names of other gods or even let their be heard crossing your lips. So like, Hey, did you see that movie? And you, and you just named a God, you know, I won't get into it, but there there's those movies that are out there and the names of those other gods and, but they just cross our lips. And so I would just, presume that the more we practice not saying the names of other gods, uh, the result might even lead to us forgetting their names at all. You know, we really want to get to that point eventually where we don't have problems with, you know, not obeying God's 
word, not obeying his commands. So, okay, I would call this like a little intermission break, but really what I wanted to do was to get back to, um, he has set us apart to be holy unto him. And it's like in this day and age, we should be thinking, how can I be set apart? How can I be holy for him? In Exodus 22, 31, he tells us, you are to be my especially separated people. And also in Psalm 4, verse 3, it says, understand that Adonai sets apart the godly person for himself. Adonai will hear when I call to him, being set apart for him. And he separates us apart as well. I mean, the, couldn't get any better than that. So we were talking about the foreigners and the strangers in Exodus 23, verse 9. So why not oppress these people? Why? Well, it says because you were just like them. When you were in Egypt, you know how it feels to be a foreigner, how to be a stranger. And let's look at it today. We were once lost and without hope. So we should be able to understand how other people who don't have any hope, who don't have Yeshua right now, how they feel. They don't know what it feels like to have hope, to have Yeshua. So that should give us the same kind of a feeling, you know, like don't oppress the foreigner, don't oppress the lost person, don't make them feel any worse than they really are. Try to make them feel like they have something good to look forward to. Okay, the blood. It's like Moses, can you imagine being there and he's blood on you? Like, what is that on me? You know, well, he did that. And it's, I can't imagine how many people got a little bit of blood on them, but we're able to see that that is what seals the covenant that Adonai uh, makes with us as well. And uh, so he took the blood, he sprinkled it on the people and said, this is the blood of the covenant, which Adonai has made with you in accordance with all these words. So all these words is a familiar term, and it's also a, a term that we hear frequently in this parsha, uh, because all these words is the important thing. It's not just some of these words, uh, a couple of these words, it's all of these words. And but let's jump ahead into one of the, the gospels, Matthew 26, 27, and 28. Uh, he took the cup of wine, he made a bracha, and gave to them, saying, All of you drink from it, for this is my blood. And they're like, mm. <laughs> Uh, which ratifies the new covenant, my blood shed on behalf of many, so that they may have their sins forgiven. There's the reason for that. So he did the same. This is in Luke now, 2220. He did the same with the cup after the meal, saying, This cup is the new covenant ratified by my blood, which is being poured out for you. So can we seriously accept all of Yeshua's commands? I mean, all of them. He, all right, so he spoke a lot, but every time he said something, I mean, that's God talking. So every time he said something, okay, it wasn't just uh, a suggestion. So he wasn't just a good motivational speaker, right? That's... No, he wasn't just giving us the list of his personal suggestions. Uh, everything he said came from the Father. So we should consider that to be very, very important. Uh, in John 5, 3, Yeshua says to us, I can, can do a thing. I can't do a thing on my own. He says, as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is right. Because I don't seek my own desire, but the desire of the one who sent me. So he's, he's letting us know that he's not just giving us his opinion. He's giving us the words from Father God. So we can't 
ignore Yeshua's commands. In Matthew 5, 43 and 44, it says, You have heard that our fathers were told, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. It's not easy to do something like that, especially when you know you were wronged or you know you were falsely accused. And there's your enemy standing there, you know, and you're not supposed to seek your own revenge either, right? So we let God take revenge for us and love your enemies. And I think sometimes, you know, that's going to be the, the test of our true discipleship, our test of our true faith. And if he will be able to defend us when we just give it to him. So in conclusion, the words, remember I was saying, what words? All these words, right? In Exodus 24, 3, 4, and 7, I'm just going to read it straight through. It goes, Moses came and told the people everything that Adonai had said. I don't think he left out anything, including all the rulings. Moses wrote down all the words of Adonai. Then he took the book. Maybe it was a big scroll, <laughs> right, uh, of the covenant and read it aloud so that the people could hear. And they responded. Everything that Adonai has spoken, we will do and obey. So how much do we love Yeshua? Are we willing to say, everything you have said, I will do and obey? That's my prayer. So, Father, in Yeshua's name, I just pray that in our hearts, we will consider every word that you spoke, and that it will be our desire to not just be hearers, doers of your word and obey them completely from our heart, not just our mind, but from our heart. I ask that in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you for joining Olive Tree Community Spokane for today's message. Join us for 24-7 Messianic music and teaching just like this on Messianic Joy Radio. Go to live365.com or download the app Live365 and search for Messianic Joy. Shalom from Olive Tree Community, Spokane.